Mike, we've got a lot going on. We haven't talked to you in about three weeks. There's a lot, a lot can happen in 21 days. Yes, it can. Mike, we want to talk a little bit about, uh, you said we might be talking about Australia, and we are this evening. There's wildfires are breaking out like crazy there, unprecedented. And I guess the first question's got to be, uh, that might not be what you was referring to. Um, can you talk a little bit about Australia and the first the wildfires or whatever else you had on your mind? Well, that, uh, you know, the, that part of the world is hot. It's very hot. The ground temperatures in Australia, by the way, have been going up uh, for the last, what, 45 years. They've been uh, increasing. Uh, with that increase in temperature, they have spiked in the last, I believe, three years. Um, because it because of where it sits, it is on a landmass that is pushed up. Uh, I do believe that Australia is going to be another uh, surprise point. Uh, somewhere between Australia and the oceans around about her, that um, some vents will open up in that area. In other words, we're, we're looking, there's going to be a lot of volcanic activity um, that will begin to take place. Australia is one of those places because people really don't have uh, a place where they can just get off that continent. Um, it's going to be one of those places to watch because of the dangers that can be involved, even by open vents out to sea, because they have a lot of volatile, a lot of countries have placed things in Australia that are volatile to uh, uh, temperature fluctuations. And that would just be a bad scenario for something to uh, you know, take place in Australia that would uh, wipe out some folks there. Well, um, these wildfires that are burning, of course, they don't know why they are burning. Um, they haven't had any real lightning strikes or anything like that. Now, they do know it's fall of the year. Things are a little dry. Uh, but still, these fires are just everywhere. And I guess first question you got to ask yourself, could there be some fissures uh, slowly releasing out there and, and, and starting the fires? And, and as you've said, there are going to be more and more and more of these volcanic fissures opening up under the floor of the oceans it can also happen in a land mass like australia couldn't it yeah it can and with the ground temperatures going up in australia it makes it uh it makes it a bit dangerous because as time goes forward as these weather patterns change because of the uh, our, our position of our solar system is tilting now and new influences are acting upon the earth we're, we're looking at a um, a very difficult scenario around the rim of the earth, right? The temperatures are searing hot. I mean, searing hot. Uh, for example, in the dead man zone around the earth, there's a place where nobody, no fish live, no boats sail, no anything, because the water is just uh, incredibly hot there. That water temperature is, is beginning to go up. It'll reach a five degree mark, at least by January of next year, uh, going up in temperature, which is that's unprecedented, right? Well, uh, Australia is is feeling some some of the uh, warmer waters in the southern hemisphere. For example, uh, even by even right below Florida, the water temperatures are incredibly hot. Even right now, they're incredibly hot. And, uh, it's like this uh, storm that's forming. The only thing that's stopping it is the there's a cold air stream uh, coming down. It's traveling uh, southwest, and it's the only thing stopping that hurricane from actually gaining too much power. But it's about to hit warmer waters. I mean, exceptionally warmer waters. Uh, if that happens, it's going to uh, you know Cuba better watch out. But um, we have hotter water temperatures. We have unprecedented volcanic activity in the water. Um, NOAA is aware of this, and they're starting to look at a lot of different volcanoes and scenarios uh, because they have to give the advisements to certain governmental organizations and agencies uh, so that they can come up with the plans to shuffle people around. But you're looking at something that's, uh, you know, it's exponentially increasing. It's, it's, it's really going up pretty fast. Uh, Mike, you talk about the fact that this hurricane, which is Jerry, Jerry, Hurricane Jerry, that when it hits these hot waters as it closer gets to Florida, it could explode into something huge. And it may not make that right north right hook. It, I mean, what if it doesn't? Like you said, Cuba, beware. Um, so, you know, again, the models are saying it's going to hook about the time he gets to Bermuda. But, uh, you know, again, you guys, this is a different world we're in. I mean, Mike, that's what I'm hearing you say. The water temperatures are much more higher than they were. And thus, look how bad the predictions were during the last hurricane we had, Dorian. 
They could predict. Okay. In, they, they had no idea where that storm was going. And they may not know where this one's going. That's your point. That is true. And with the warmer water temperatures, it could, it could uh, the energy uh, this thing could actually begin to absorb and grow from is just astounding. So it, there is a mechanism in place to feed it. The, the uh, difference is going to be the, some of the high-pressure systems above it, just like with Dorian. It was two specific high-pressure systems that uh, before we had that show about that, that high-pressure system actually caused it to stall and, and so it kind of rested over um, – over those lands but this one could uh it could do the same thing we have a similar pattern forming now the high pressure systems are in different places but it could be a similar thing but as far as these uh these these fires near the southern hemisphere and in the southern hemisphere we just have a heat crisis going on pastor boy you remember i told you we'll see rain rain will be a problem yeah uh, we'll have lots of water plus droughts at the same time. Yes, I know did. That's, that's difficult to understand, but yep. if you look at the temperature differences uh, between being in the shade and being in the sun, the soils now, unlike other times, we can actually have like like uh, Texas. Texas is, is being flooded right now in certain parts, right? Yes. Within a day, it can totally dry out, totally dry out. Right. We've lost the majority of the crops. Uh, a lot of people have lost crops all around the world. Our grains are, are exhausted. You know, the reserve grains are exhausted. Uh, something has happened to some other grains. So, we're, you know, there's a predicament because of these uh, weather changes. Um, and then with the heat steadily increasing across the um, uh, southern hemisphere and some of the warmer temperatures really fluctuating in the northern hemisphere we we have a weather crisis happening is what we have the atmosphere can hold twice as much moisture as it did now if you look carefully at this that means every year should we still be here next year only lord knows uh well in this state anyway then your average thunderstorm will have the same power probably as a category one hurricane what? meaning its potential is is that's going to be a normal potential which is why we're seeing uh, you know that this last hurricane the water it was shuffling around was enormous so uh you're looking at the average thunderstorm now being in incredibly devastating we're looking uh, at they're seeing more and more plasma conduits from um the, the density in the atmosphere is becoming uh you know a, a little more than normal so you have a lot of static flowing around up there which causes more of a potential for for a plasma or lightning um so yeah we're looking at an all-out increase in weather woes folks you're looking at uh, footage of mike around the world join us this is texas these are uh, this afternoon storms as he said this um, uh, admelia is not even a tr wasn't even a tropical storm was not a category one it was not a tropical storm it was a tropical depression that dropped 30 inches of rain on uh, just outside of houston uh, Beaumont, Texas is underwater. Uh, several of these uh, other towns. And there was massive hail. There was uh, lightning bolts. There was uh, uh, just, you know, just unprecedented. Nobody thought this was going to turn into something big. Matter of fact, your meteorologists weren't even really tracking the storm much. And uh, I tell you, you're right, Mike. And why is the ground heating up, Mike? Uh, look, the temperatures are yeah a little warm, but not that warm, not to cause the, the ground to be hot hot the the oceans are warm four and five the pacific ocean is almost five degrees warmer than normal what's going on mike yeah we have a magma problem you know in, in my humble opinion um we the solar system is in a different place now they're sneaking information out to the populace or, or trying to downgrade it at least but it's it's we face one of these unavoidable circumstances where we're being reintroduced into uh, certain energies or certain types of radiation we haven't seen in a long time. There are traces of it in history. I know that every most people look for an ice age as coming, right? Um, some type of ice age. Uh, but, but I have to remind everybody, an ice age is caused by volcanism, right? The sky is filling with ash, blocking the sun, and therefore you have a freeze effect. Right. And we have a problem this time. We have an overabundance of activity of magma within the Earth, right? And it's being fed by some exotic energies that there are no record of. In other words, uh, the, um, 
the earth is being fed this continuous stream of energy and it's absorbing it right and it's going inside the earth which is heating up everything inside the earth it's causing everything to be hyperactive um, some of the proof behind this is that most people who take uh, or on cruise ships and everything else if they go out there right now there, there are three to my understanding there are three uh, anomalies in the ocean right now and they are actually shooting up ash from in the middle of the ocean from nowhere what? right there are other and and we're going to see more of this we're going to see land lifts which means uh, over there in japan god bless those people those people need help but in japan that that's a totally unstable place to be and you have new land masses that are forming in that area all over the place it's only a matter of a few months and new land masses will also form because the vol volcanoes are pushing um, a lot of material up from within the earth up top but it's still not enough to release majority of the pressure um, not only that but we have a heating inside the earth now for an ice age to take effect, we can't have that much heating inside the Earth. If the atmosphere were totally blocked right now, uh, given the rate of the increase of heat from surface temperatures of the ground, soil temperatures, um, we would be overheated from the inside out, right? Just today, another report was released. Gamma rays have gone up. The release of gamma rays from within the Earth are increasing, still increasing. It's, it's the uh, neutrino detectors. It's thrown some of their detection uh, algorithms off. So they have to adjust for Earth releasing more gamma rays in order to detect neutrinos. We have a few explosions from space being expected this month, uh, one of which can will feel the effects of. We have, uh, it's just a lot of things going on, but the weather is... Is, is, is getting worse and worse. Last year, the rain that fell, it wasn't, uh, uh, the rain was half of what it is now. In other words, in a storm, in your average storm, where it's dropping eight inches of rain, um, the amount of rain dropped last year, right, was half of that. And I was looking over the numbers, and I know they try to play with the numbers to round things out, but that means next year, we continue on this trend. Next year, it'll be twice as much as this year and so on and so forth so we're looking at something that's also speeding up the crisis this weather crisis of which nobody can do anything oh, about. Yeah, the winds are the next thing to come all right and you're saying that something's speeding up everything. you're talking the five waves of energy these chargeable particles that are starting to inundate us with radiation radioactive particles that are highly static heavy uh, that's pushing the the jet streams down, and that's going to cause more ferocious straight line winds. When you say those are really going to get bad, what do you mean by that, Mike? Well, that term, atmosphere compression. I know a lot of people. That's my term, by the way. That I kind of used to explain a process that we're undergoing. It will continue to get worse as density in the upper atmosphere increases. Um, we're going to have more and more captured or compressed um, materials below um, the atmospheres, right? Now, an, an odd thing is happening also as, as the density of the ionosphere increases, we're also having um, a decrease in some of our lower atmospheres. In other words, the gases, because of the extremes in weather, some of the gases have become well, they're just varying in their in their altitude, uh, which affects aircraft and everything else. But when when you have a change in um, altitude of the atmospheres, you also have a direct change in how fast the wind can blow, right? Because it's going to offer a different type of resistance. And with more and more debris and everything else coming into the atmosphere, well, we have a problem for me. You add ash with that, but volcanoes are going off all over the place. Within the next, uh, I'm, I'm sure that certain people have noticed a type of haze in the atmosphere, right? Yeah. Well, has anybody noticed a soot type material on their vehicles yet? Anybody? Because that'll be the next thing. It'll look like dust, but every so often you're going to catch these soot like particles, uh, you know, on your car and everything else. Not not a whole bunch, but that will let you know that some of this debris from volcanism is being trapped in the stratosphere, traveling all over the place. That's also resistant. So with all this in play, the winds will most certainly increase due to a thinning in our lower atmospheres and an increase in the upper atmospheres, right? So, you, so that's an absolute imbalance of things is what that is. Mike, uh, 
Folks, this is Mike from the World with us. Uh, Mike from the World Council of Time. Mike, there's a super volcano they just announced that has awakened, uh, and it is uh, pronounced Utu Ruinchu. Utu Ruinchu. It's out of Bolivia. They're saying that this new super volcano Utu Ruinchu is a dormant stratovolcanic. Uh, volcano, super volcano from southwest Bolivia, where signs of unrest have been detected by deformation and seismic measurements. The magma chambers are filling and the ground is inflating. Uh, this is just one that I think they're willing to talk to us about. But in your opinion, is this one uh, something we sh is this worse than Yellowstone or is there some under the ocean that are much worse? What is your opinion on the Bolivia one here? This one, I would place at number three. Tamo Masif, number one. Um, Italy, number two. This one, number three. Yellowstone, number four. Wow! And, but due to the depth of this one in Bolivia, um, for me, with the, with the uh, deformation and the uplifts in land, I believe that's about 65 plus kilometers down from the surface, right? Yeah, I'll just think about something. Yeah, it says 60, that. It's about 60 some, yes. 65 kilometers. And look how much landmass that is to be pushed up. Can you imagine the force uh, that's building oh. down in these chambers? Uh, that's just unbelievable. So you're yeah, saying that, a 65 kilometer landmass, and Brock is showing it to us right now from uh, Google Maps. This 65 kilometer landmass is rising at the same time. That is a force that is inconceivable for the human psyche. Yeah, and 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 the depth, you, you're, the depth plus the, all the soils and rocks and everything else on top. That that is unheard of. That's an incredible force. So for it to be filling up, forcing everything upward. Right. right and causing that that uh causing that bulge like it is in iceland that's a problem iceland also is having a lot of uh activity a lot of activity so um yeah we're looking at some severe change i believe uh what was it katla katla in europe that was in europe 1918 that one went we have some more around that area which will also uh be doing a uh uh, something nobody wants it to do but we have all these volcanoes that are ancient and uh, remember we had that discussion about these dormant volcanoes coming back again and that uh, they would uh, you know they're going to run out of excuses to hide this um, that was close to the ocean so it is connected to fault lines uh, as well which is another problem because if a volcano near a fault line uh, starts to destabilize the region around it then you're looking at some type of cascade effect that one could actually affect california in a great way so uh you know, that's one to watch. So those ground swells, even if it alleviates some of the magma inside, you're still going to have some type collapse. And if that is the case, because of its proximity to fault lines, you're looking at some sort of a cascading event. It will affect California's fault lines. This one will. Folks, we just, for the first time ever in a live broadcast here, have hit over 5,000 people with us on YouTube Live. Mike, people are also worried about, in Italy, Stromboli and Mount Etna. Uh, and the volcano, and there's, and there's also, of course, uh, fault lines that run through there. You've mentioned the many times that you greatly fear what could happen to Italy. Is Stromboli and Etna, and now the, the five waves of energy, Planet X Nibiru, according to John Moore today, we had John Moore on today at noon, and there was no question. He told us about the meetings in 1979 when the, when the top army, uh, uh, intelligence officers were brought in and told about Planet X, told about the companion rocks that are coming with it. When it gets closer, it gets to us. It's the companion rocks. It's the, it's the debris field that is what's really concerning them. Um, and that the pole shifts, the, vul the volcanism, all these things. So, Mike, the, this thing must be getting closer because we can see the signs of it everywhere. What is your opinion about Stromboli and Mount Etna? Well, they're part of a system. Uh, they're part of an underwater system. And uh, to, to see those two active, you know, it was an isolated event when these two went by themselves. That's part of a system. And uh, due to... Uh, 
when they did the deep core study of Italy, they, they found so much in that place. It's, it's a volatile situation. It is a large system. I mean, uh, lots of magmas in that place. So, yes, Italy is, is, is severely on my mind because any type of external uh, pressure or internal problem can really cause those things to go off. And the population is so dense around certain places that, uh, and it's so close to the ocean itself, you know, anybody can look at that and say nobody would be spared from that. Hardly anybody would be spared from that. Not to mention, uh, if the water level changes in that region of the earth, it would, due to simulations, it would build up momentum enough to almost wipe out our east coast, which is another problem if that system uh, of volcanoes begins to activate its position in such a way that dynamically it will affect our east coast, um, you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt. So now all these events, you know, we're coming closer to actually not talking about it, but praying about it, you know, in the middle of it happening, trying to pick up the pieces. These these things were quickly going to go from uh, theory or observation to a real time event, which we have to deal with the aftermath of. And it's uh, I, my hope with Italy is that some of the folks out there are aware of, of, of what can destabilize and the current conditions. Because mind you, uh, at the beginning of the year, they had airports, they had highways, they had everything else. They were just driving along and find that part of the highway was melted. Yeah. And they got the crews on it quickly to, to uh, shore it up a little bit. But, uh, you know, those folks, they, if they were aware, they could they could notice certain changes. If they're educated to know what happens before these things are about to blow, they can get out of there. But if they wait on authorities to tell them, and we know how those places are. After the fact, they'll fire people. After the fact, they'll talk about it. Well, we don't need that in this case. In fact, they don't need that in Bolivia either. And we don't need that on our West Coast. We don't need that in, in, in Texas either. You what's know, Texas blow, or Mark, what's going to blow first? What's going to blow first? I mean, is, is Cascadia going to go? Uh, is Italy going to blow? Does Bolivia blow? Uh, 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 you know, is is the New Madrid fall line going to go? Uh, Yellowstone? I mean, do we know what's going to go first? Or And it, we're moving past theories. We're, forget the theories. The science, the real data is here now the chargeable particles are here the the temperatures are rising is this man-made is it time are we going to get past the man-made thing mike finally well you know what i don't think anybody knows what's going to hit first i think what will hit first is is, is conditional it, it really is conditional because one can cause another to go off and it, there are so many variables at play but one thing we do know is these things are now beginning to uh, become science. They're, they're becoming a study. And um, if they're becoming a study, then they have looked at them for a few years now. And if they are putting it out to the public, uh, basically it's a safe phase to say, hey, we knew about that before it killed everybody over there, right? But, but we're quickly going beyond this, this era of, uh, you know, could that happen or could it not? Why do actually you entertaining or, or not entertaining, but um, dealing with the aftermath of these things. You Mike, know? but why do you say, okay, now the Canary Islands, should we be concerned? Yeah, anything connected with a volcano, any volcano that is, well, most of them are connected to fault lines. So magma is an issue. Magma is an actual So why do you issue. say, now you also said Japan, these poor people need help. What's yeah, that about? Yeah, well, if you, you know what, uh, um, during the time of Fukushima, uh, when Fukushima went off, when, and when they had that meltdown, I was actually looking at that area to see what would happen um, during that crisis and what would happen with the introduction of both the tsunami, a, a few land shakes and everything else. Well, the land, the way the land settled, it was too quick, which means some of your main vents never opened up, right? Some of your main um, pressure points were never relieved. Right, so they're actually looking, uh, well, I could say I'm looking for the big one to hit in Japan. I mean, the big, big one to hit in Japan. What? Um, because they have they have had no pressure release in that area for years. I mean, for years, no pressure release. 
we've had pressure releases in California. We've had them in, in South America. We've had them in Russia. We've had none in Japan. They've had the small quakes. And the way the fault lines are positioned, if you were to see all of the cracks, you would notice that the larger uh, plate pressure points have never moved so they've been building up pressure this entire time those people over there they have every single indication of a destabilization event they have uplifts in land they have heat differentials that are, are quite damaging to structures and everything else over there and um you know it's only a matter of time now the the that's not a good situation because how in the world could they evacuate uh, a lot of people all at one time, they can't do that. They can't. They, especially since the waters are being monitored by China and, and we, you know, there are problems there in those lands. They just can't evacuate people like that. So, you know, geologists are going to have to be on their toes. But even if they're not, we're still going to entertain the fact so that things, this crust is destabilizing quickly. And as we get close to any gravitational pull of anything, the Earth is going to begin to shift its shape, right? And as it shifts its shape, so is the crust going to move. So, so we, we are, um, you know, we're looking at some times that we have, we have not seen ever. Okay, we man. Just haven't seen this yet. And let me ask you a question, okay, folks. Mike around the world's with us. We really appreciate it. Uh, over five thousand uh, one hundred people here right now, live on YouTube. And so, let me just say this, Mike. You know, we know that this Planet X is coming on the outskirts of our atmosphere or of our solar system. It's bringing a lot of companion rocks with it. Are we going to get hit with a, is it? Are you more concerned about us getting hit with a m massive meteor or just the earth boiling from the radiation and the core of the earth and the magma rising and the catastrophic volcanism, earthquakes, volcanoes, tsunamis and that kind of thing? Are you more, which one are you more concerned of? First of all, I do not like heat. I don't like heat, right? Everybody who knows me, they know I don't like heat. I've been out to the desert lots of times. I still don't like heat, right? I'll never get used to it. I know we're going to have a heat problem. I know that. We're going to have a heat problem. We're going to have a heat problem and a solar problem. The one thing people, maybe they don't know is this. Even though we have a system out there, right, its influence is going to affect our sun. The sun's light has been changing all this time. Yeah. The sun's heat is becoming more intense. It's almost like uh, it, it's a real prickly, tingly feeling. Uh, we have brand new diseases uh, that, that specifically thrive in heat that are now taking over, that they're all over the place. Um, heat is going to be a problem. We're gonna really feel a lot of heat. Well, with heat comes decay. With that heat comes the death of foliage. Certain areas like the East Coast, right, the, the Northeast, is going to become a dry spot. We're going to have a, with this heat, all we need is a flashpoint with, with uh, temperature differences. And then the jet stream is going to reverse again. And when that happens, the East Coast will become a desert. The West Coast will become a dust bowl. And the Midwest is, they, you know, the way we have things built and settled, uh, we're not ready for a shift in that. Now, it's happened before in the 20s. We had a change in the jet stream. Yeah, we did. Right? The dust now bowls. Now why, and it's going to happen. It's, it's right on track to do it again. And if it does it again, people are going to lose a lot of food. We're, we're just not going to have no. the food we need. Um, overseas, there are going to be some parts overseas that will flourish if anybody's there. Um, but uh, over here is not going to be such a good idea. Now, the bad part about this with the high winds, uh, with these changes come high winds, Pastor Paul. The winds are going to become an enemy of everybody. We don't have structures that can withstand hurricane force winds uh, deep inland, right? We just simply don't have that. So can you imagine this world with super high winds and hot temperatures? That's called that. That's going to build a lot of problems for us, a lot of friction. But we're going to entertain some super high winds and everybody will be frightened of the average. Storm. You know, uh, the Bible does tell us, Mike, that the earth is going to melt with a fervent heat and even the elements thereof are going to are going to melt. OK, and there will be to, to, so heat is something you don't like. Heat something I don't like either. But ultimately, I think this planet 
uh, according to the word of God, the fire, the brimstone, the effects that we're going to experience here are coming. Let's ask a question, Mike. Uh, you know, again, the, listen, folks, we're not fear mongering here. We're giving you actual scientific information that's already happening. And we're also looking at the biblical prophecies that says this is going to come about. So um, we want you to understand you're not to have the spirit of fear. The Lord hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. But my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. If you just, if uh, we've got to sound the alarm as watchmen, we have to share what's coming so that the people don't say, no one told me. I didn't realize we were coming to this situation. I am so unprepared and people will just, they'll die, won't they, Mike? The Bible says men's hearts will fail them for fear of things coming upon the earth and they will literally just die. So we do have to warn people. But let me get back to where you're at, Mike, because you're on a roll here and we want to get this. Do you, Mike, how much time do we have here before this Planet X? I mean, are we, is 2023, 2025, is this really going to be, let me just tell you something, according to Emmanuel Velikovsky in his writings, the last time that we encountered the Planet X situation back in the plagues of Egypt, that it was written by the Peruvians that there was liquid fire that flowed like rivers. I mean, they recorded uh, tsunamis that were massive and uh, the earthquakes unheard of. Um, are we getting close to that period? Can you give us some idea what's going to happen in the next four years or so? You know, at Past Policy, as the weather phenomena increases, and specifically some of the cosmic rays that are being detected uh, here on this earth, by the way, anybody can detect cosmic rays. Um, if they kind of look that up, they can make a chamber that can detect them, but they're increasing. They're becoming quite sporadic. And uh, with these changes, everything is happening exponentially meaning if somebody said yeah we're five years away from actually experiencing any great thing well you can you can cut that time down by one quarter and that's the actual time you have in other words what i'm saying is we have well they already know of objects way out there that are inbound right right there's some objects that are inbound here's the problem when you calculate an object way out there is outside of the influences of the pull of our sun the closer it gets, the faster it gets here, right? Yep. The closer it gets, the faster it travels. If we have another system out there, then all the calculations are going to have to be cut short. In other words, the Bible, see, I believe the word of God, when it says men's hearts fail them for fear, for looking after those things which are coming upon the earth, that means somebody knew what was coming, but it came too quick, and they were not ready. Right. That's why they went and hid in the dens of the rocks. Right. Why would they... Why wouldn't they, you know, that's so funny because you read that, but they hid there, right? Why not just go down there before anything happens and start your society, whatever you're going to do, you don't have to hide. But in this case, they're having heart attacks. If your heart fails you for fear, you had a heart attack. Right. Well, you know, and then they hit themselves too. And then it says, uh, Jesus said that it'll be like the days of Noah, not because of the, I'm not referring to the giants, but he said they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the son of man be. But that term, they didn't know anything until the flood came and took them all away. So if they don't know anything, they could calculate and say, well, we're safe for five years. But in fact, we, we don't know. We could have, we could literally have about a month. We were Really good. If another system was a few million light years away from Earth, you collapse that time every single hour, right? So instead of a million light years in the next hour, it's going to be half of that, then half of that, then half of that, then half of that. Were well, you looking at a time that puts us around, what, 20 days? And then kapoof, we're going to entertain something we don't want to. And if that system is traveling that fast, then the debris is going to be. Uh, unavoidable we're going to have debris and in fact instead of them lying saying all these rocks are on earth from mars of which i can't verify that now i can't go to mars and verify that i don't believe that for one moment i believe that some of the exotic matter that we have right are remnants of what passed through here the last time right because they are radioactive right and they will come to your your house or whatever and they'll pay you eight hundred thousand dollars if you find one of these right. cookies right but they've been here for a long time right they're laden with bacteria right. inside the rock they didn't come from mars 
right? That came from being in proximity with our Earth. Right. And they're traveling so fast, they bounce in and out of the atmosphere, and then they're carried around and dumped in us again. It's a known fact our atmosphere has uh, bacteria and organisms in there, right? Our atmosphere does. So these rocks, if they're at a high rate of speed, they're not come. They're not going to hit us. Well, some of them won't hit us, but they'll just skip off and go back out and then come around and hit us. I think that's what they're finding. So you're looking at a very intricate uh, interaction between different bodies with the Earth as this thing passed, and it's not pretty. Mike, that's you know, a lot of times... It- things on the surface melting? Absolutely, because if we... If there's a twin system to ours, the heat alone will be unimaginable. It'll be unimaginable. And things in the air will ignite. Mike, you know, we've been, you know, you hear all these alien abductions and a lot of this other stuff. But what people are not are not understanding when it comes to these meteorites and shards of metal and pieces of iron and things that they're finding. This did not come from alien deposit. This is from actual our last encounter with Planet X that literally brought about the plagues of Egypt and all the ancient societies before us wrote it down. The Peruvians, the Mayans, the Incas, the North American Indians, the Asians, the Pharaohs, the hieroglyphics. It's all there. We were told this happened once and we know it's coming back. And, uh, and that's why I can feel the energy in your voice. I can feel the passion rising because you know, I know, you know, if, if me, just being this little country preacher in the cornfields, I read the Bible and the Holy Spirit tells me, you better start sounding this alarm, Begley, because even, and, and find people who can tell you the scientific ramification of the prophecies of the Bible. And Mike, I think that's why you and I have been doing this for six years, is to try our best to break it to the population that we are running out of time and that folks need to get their soul right with God. This is not, we're not playing. And you're right, Revelation, it says they they tried to hide in the rocks and the mountains, but ultimately even the rocks and the mountains can't protect them from the coming of the Lord and the coming apocalypse and the things that's getting ready to take place on this planet. It's a real deal, isn't it, Mike? Yeah, it is. And Pastor Paul, let me say this too. In archaeology, right? I know there have been lots of archaeologists out there, but they've been digging for a long time. And the deeper they go, they find the same story. Somebody on this earth encountered some things so bad, they made entire cities in memory, right, to tell a story. Yeah. Some, of the, some, of the, some of the ruins, most of the ruins that you see tell a story. You know what they tell a story of? Something came into proximity with this earth. It was so bad and put fear in men so incredibly high that they built entire cities to make it um, so that no one would forget. Of course, man and his arrogance, we like to believe things that suit us. But we're quickly beginning to see that, uh oh, well, maybe the Bible had it right all this time. Of course it did. And these ruins, they're finding these markers all over the world that show these similarities because everybody went through it, not just some one place on this earth, but everybody went through it. And even in the recent digs, right, they found out that an upright column marks something. It means something. So some of these great cathedrals and columns that people see, they're actually commemorating a story of devastation that they wanted our their children's children's children to see can you imagine something so fearful that they would erect monuments that they would tell stories we've misinterpreted some of these stories those stories are warnings they're warnings that something is coming make sure they in in, in a lot of them the one of the in translations pastor paul out of 173 of them is this one thing forsake earthly goods and save the soul that's exactly what they equate to in other words don't cling to your stuff save your soul because it's it's a message to tell us you're not going to save anything externally right so save your soul and that's when that's when they also said that's when the face of the creator is no longer an idea that's when his the face of the creator is no longer in man's imagination but it's real when they see that destruction coming right because 
we are in somewhat of a state of denial. People like you and I, we fight to stay out of that state of denial, to yeah. relax in our chairs and say, oh, nothing's coming. <laughs> but if, 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 we did not, if we didn't do this stuff, if nobody heard of any calamities coming, you know, there would be no rush for salvation. There would be no teachings of salvation. There would be no nothing. Everybody would be ignorant. But because, I hate to say this now, we're not fear-mongering. No. Right? Because God said it first, not us. That's the weird. ancient society said it first, not us. Right. We're just said yep they were right right so when these things do come around those who have heard it they'll say you know what somebody who believed in christ told me this would happen so god is still looking after me they will look to the father for their protection while some other uh, nut job is going to stand on top of a rock with an umbrella saying i'm going to save myself no he's not because he, he hasn't been putting efforts towards the eternal things he's been looking towards the temporal things these 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 impermanent things that are all going to pass away but a smart and wise individual right will invest in eternal things and these warnings that we're going quickly past well i, I can almost you know it's in my spirit so strong that we're going to be talking one day Right? We're going to yeah. be talking and something undeniable will happen. People are going to panic. They're going to run all over the Internet trying to find an answer. They're going to break down communications lines and everything else. And they're not going to be able to reach the ones or remember the ones who had the first message of these things. They're going to try and run and find an explanation to calm their souls. And they will not be able to. And they're going to be stuck in that state until their end comes. Mike, run the world, folks. Mike, we got to get, get, can we get you back next, uh, where am I at next Thursday? I got to think, 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 no, I'm not, no, two weeks. It'll be two weeks. Mike, can I get you back in two weeks from tonight? Two weeks from tonight. That is, let me look here real quick. October. Paul, I believe that's, uh, that's the third. Okay. Okay. We're good to go. We're good to go. Mike, thank you so much. The Bible said if a man should gain the whole world, and lose his soul what would he give in exchange that's what mike's trying to tell you you got to get it right you got to get right with jesus mike thank you so much brother i'll see you in two weeks god bless your pastor paul god bless